I mean, not that we planned it, but I think Lydia had a pretty unique upbringing. I was 42 when I had her and never thought I'd have a child, and Ron didn't either. Her father was Aboriginal and with me, and I remember at one point Ron and I said, she's got two very different cultures within her. I mean, not just a Caucasian, but American. Um, and we wanted to give her the best, as far as we could, give her the best of both worlds, so that then she can make her own choices as she grows up. I first met um, Lydia and Ron and Diana when I was asked to take a bus full of kids from Stradbroke Island to uh, Alice Springs, where they were running the um, Central Australian Aboriginal Convention. She was just an average kid back then, you know, just running around in the bush. She was a quiet girl. Her whole stature is so different, like such a string bean she was. Such a skinny little kid who's, who's grown into this wonderful woman. She is exactly like she is now. I think people use the word humble too often, but she, she was very humble and very grounded. She's not necessarily quiet, but very understated out there. You know, goalkeepers can be a little bit uh, different to other people, but she wasn't. She had um, sort of arms that seemed to stretch the whole width of the goal. She was like, um, is it The Incredibles, that cartoon where the, the family's arms kind of stretch? She was tall, skinny, bubbly, very nervous, but she had this aura around her that just made um, her seem so comfortable in such an environment that was so much older than her. Goalkeepers are definitely a special breed and Lydia definitely fits into that category. Um, I think you have to be pretty crazy to be willing to put your body in front of a flying ball, but I think it shows her character and really how strong she is. Just a very special presentation tonight um, to a, a milestone for Lids. Um, 100 games for your country is something that's extremely special and being the first goalkeeper um, to play 100 games for the Matildas is, is incredible and um, I'm really proud to, to have been part of your journey and just really proud to call you my teammate and also a good friend. Her growing up in Kalgoorlie and the bush and all that, we didn't really, I mean, we didn't know about Matildas, you know, and we didn't really know, I mean, I had no idea about elite sport at that level. Her dad was so, you know, he, he was so proud of being Aboriginal and, and all that, and he used to say, I want Lydia to represent her people, Aboriginal people, and Australia, because he loved his people, but he loved Australia. But of course, he passed away before just a year and a half before she was invited onto the Matilda's squad. But he was at every soccer game she played. He sometimes was the only Aboriginal person that the other parents knew. Uh, he, he encouraged her, supported her, and he always believed she would one day represent Australia and represent Aboriginal people. You know, she's done him proud, I think. And he, he, he's not a man that, that is proud, but quietly he would be very proud of her. She is this person who, off the field, is calm and placid and uh, easygoing and relaxed. And then she's a fierce competitor on the field. So she brings that blend with her, that as soon as she crosses that line, whether it's to go into a training session or whether it's to go into a game, she's completely focused. Lydia's ability to be resilient through you know, tough moments and and mistakes it has always boded well for her. I think every big game she rocked up and, and she was so solid. I think always with Lydia it's that wonderful confidence that she she has and the you know you often hear of people lighting up a room she has that ability as well. You know from a very young girl she had some very special traits. Look, I think it's essential. I think we see a lot in the press of what Aboriginal people don't achieve and we need people like Lydia. And Lydia um, has reached the top level. For young people to look at that and see this is a young person who was a young, shy little girl roaming the bush of Kalgoorlie and Western Australia and, and she's reached, you know, the peak level. When I watch her and I, and I see her ticking over these accolades, you know, I take huge pride in it because it's 
it's my mate that's accomplishing these things, but then it's also somebody that I've seen grow from not being able to kick a ball to, you know, playing the, the ball on a platter for Sam Kerr. You know, there were some tough challenges there for Lydia, and, and particularly coming from the background that she came from. And, and as I say, you know, it's real testament to her character and her perseverance. Look, my boys phone me and say, Mum, aren't we really related to Lydia? <laughs> And I was chatting with Diana about that the other night and saying, we're well, really back, back there we are actually, there's, there's a slight relation. They're part of the tribe really. At Gudaron's funeral, every man stood up and said, he's one of us, he's part of our tribe. Like everybody wanted to own him, he was an amazing man. And Lydia is an amazing woman, as her mother is as well. Look, I actually think every Aboriginal kid will say she's my auntie, yeah, or my sister. To see her grow up and accomplish the things that she has is like, it's like such a special gift to me. So I'm very, very proud.